Hi, we've got another unfortunate incident here. I was uh, playing around with my Agilent slash Keysight. Um, it should be HP, not that Keysight or Agilent rubbish. Uh, Bluetooth adapter here for their um, series of multimeters. It's got the IR uh, serial interface here, uh, which you can get like a USB interface, or you can get this little uh, cool little uh, Bluetooth adapter-y thing here. And it didn't come on, so I thought I'll, I'll install the batteries. What? Wah, wah, wah. Look at that. Um, yeah, the humanity. We have alkaline battery leakage again. Not for retail sale. These are GP alkaline jobbies. Um, expired in 2014. So, yeah, um, not good. That's not the manufacture date. That's when they expired. Um, and they have well and truly expired. Look at that. We've got our uh, potassium carbonate crystals, which are the white crystals here, because if you don't know, uh, there's potassium hydroxide inside alkaline batteries, along with alkaline and all sorts of other stuff, but it's a potassium hydroxide, um, and it leaks out of your batteries around the seal there, uh, for whatever insert reason here, and then it combines with the CO2 in the atmosphere, that pesky CO2 stuff, um, and it forms uh, potassium carbonate Crystals, that's the uh, white crystals that you can see there. And then we get little, little growths and things like that. Aren't they cute? Aren't they cute? So, um, yeah, this is particularly bad. It's it, oh, like, yeah, I have not used this for a long, long time. Probably five years it was the last time I used this. So, yeah, it's gotten right down there into the contacts. Ah, oh, it's terrible, Muriel. Absolutely terrible. So... Let's get this out. The alkaline leakage curse strikes again. They're not Dura-Leaks this time. So anyway, it happens to all brands of batteries, but insert your favorite here where, oh man, oh, that's, oh, that's crusty Burger. Uh, PCB, we can see down in there. And they've got the little uh, test points there so they can actually um, test these through the case. But yeah, there you go, these contacts. It looks like those contacts go right down onto the PCB, so it looks like, regardless of whether or not I take the case off, um, the vinegar, which we're going to use to neutralize it, just white vinegar, um, which is, so you add an acid to the alkaline here, because these uh, crystals are alkaline, so you add an acid to then neutralize it, and that will, uh, that will stop anything being eaten away, so it's going to get onto the PCB anyway, so even if I take this out, I think... Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's going to get onto the board. So, yeah, let, let's just pour it in here for funsies. And, uh, let's see. Oh, there we go. Oh, look at that. Bubbly, bubbly. It's neutralizing as we speak. So, look at that. And you can tell it's neutralized as soon as the all the bubbling action stops. Of course, you don't want to leave um, an acid, which is a mild acid like white vinegar, on your PCB. So after this, you want to clean it off. Oh, look at that. Oh, beautiful. You want to clean, thoroughly clean it off, of course, with isopropyl and water, and then dry it out thoroughly. Oh, it's still bubbling. Look at that. Still going. <laughs> that could be going for a while. Yeah, the plating on that contact is gone. It'll, like, it'll still work. Like, it'll still... It's still crusty as, but it'll it'll work at a pinch. So to get you out of trouble, it's still bubbling. Look at it. Oh wow! Like I said, now you want to get some isopropyl in there, isopropyl and water, and get that all out. But yeah, at this point, I will uh, open, try and open her up. There's it's a split there. So it looks like there's no screws on the back there. So it looks like I've got to... I'll, I'll get back to you. That's interesting. Oh, what is... Oh, that's okay. That's come from a, a sponge under there. Wow. There's our Bluetooth module. So that's just like they put a sponge on top. Not sure why. But anyway, that's sort of started to eat away and leave its residue on the back cover there. Hmm. Should have worn gloves. Got the back side of our PCB, we've got some clips here that hold it in. So if we just force these open, we should be able to pop this board out. Ugh. 
out. Yeah, this sponge is just completely eaten away. Look at that. Wow. Oh no, no, there we go. I thought they were, uh, thought they'd be soldered down onto the contacts. They're not. There you go. So I probably could have actually taken this apart. Should have taken this apart. There you go. Trap for young players. So oh, I should have looked more closely at the design of those. Um, yeah, I should have known. I should have known that <laughs> those two would be going to, yeah, yeah, I should have known. You can't pull those through because there's not enough hole there. So they must have, by design, <laughs> they, there's no other option. They must have just had the contacts there. So the PCB has been spared. Look at that bodge wire. Oh, that's a Bobby Dazzler. Oh, look at it. And, and the cutout just fits, fits around my talking head there. Isn't that beautiful? Um, as a genuine bodge wire there. There you go. Oh, no, some of it. No, no, no. You see, some of it's come down on the PCB. Okay. So you can see the blue in those vias there. Yeah, you can see the blue in those vias there. They have eaten those poor little vias away, but they're only ground. They're only ground, so, you know, and then you've got all ground stitching around here. Oh, all that crap from that sponge. Oh, it's awful. Ugh. This should still work. It hasn't gotten anything else. None of the, and we've got a regulator there. It's not that. And we've got that big power trace going over. So I think we're pretty lucky. We should be able to get away with this. And that should still work. But long term. Just dip some vinegar onto there, just in case I don't see any bubbly action happening, do you? Then water and isopropyl should take care of that nicely. And then we'll give it a scrub and we can clean that away. And, ugh, oh, that sponge just has to go. Oh, it's, it, it's awful. Oh my god, oh look, look, okay, here you go, but, oh look at that, Ugh. oh there you go, you can see the chipset there, CSR BC417, there you go, good nick apart from that, so yeah, look, I'll clean that up a bit better, I'll just do a little bit more work on that, that the plating on that pad is not great, yeah, it could pay to just tin that pad, Perhaps the other one's fine, but yeah, that negative terminal there is a bit how you're doing. And just having a careful look around the rest of the board. She looks right. No wackers. <laughs> that bodge. What are they doing there? Come on. No, she's good. Apart from that uh, negative, uh, negative pad. We could like put a new like adhesive copper pad onto that and then like wire it. You know, and, and then actually physically ground it and everything, but I think it's we're probably just better off giving that a bit of a tinny tin tin. So we'll give that the old fluxo. Oh, look at that! Our flux is bubbling. <laughs> the flu Does flux work to neutralize? I don't know. Chemist, leave it in the comments down below. Should ask Mrs. E. V. Blog. She's a chemist. Here you go. Wow, that's terrible, Muriel. That's really awful. Doesn't like that at all. A few goes, actually, I'm gonna to have to wick that off. Yeah, that's not nice, is it? <laughs> oh, hindsight probably should have left it as is. No, we had to do something that was, uh, that was not particularly good. Okay, that's looking a bit better with a second plate in there, but all the crud around the outside, we really have to clean that. Okay, it's looking a bit better. There you go, that's starting to look a lot cleaner. There you go. That'll that'll probably do it. Um, I know it still looks a bit crusty, but you know, if you only like <laughs> I wouldn't put this back into permanent operation for a decade, but uh that'll that'll just get you back up and running, I reckon. So I'll I'll give that another clean, of course. There you go. It's not complete coverage, but it is where it's needed which is the uh, in the middle where the contact is going to go. So, yeah, uh, it's not great, is it? But anyway, it'll do. I mean, the copper's directly to the ground plane, so you don't have to worry about anything else there, really. So, yeah, I think she'll be right. 
There we go. We just got the bottom of the sponge there. Look at that. Ooh, we'll just get the, uh, a little spongy up there. So we don't need any of that rubbish. And as I said, the contacts, not the best, but they will still work. It's just eaten away on there, the plating on that contact. But it'll, it'll still work for a bit. Oh, it's just, yeah, it's not great. Like if you had new... Like, yes, you can actually plate these things. You can take them out, electroplate them, etc., etc. But um, uh, for the purposes of today's experiment, uh, nope. It's <laughs> the answer to that. So I always put the batteries in there and it'll get up and working. But you wouldn't rely on it to do your data logging or whatnot. So, yeah. Mm. So put those batteries in and off. Set up. Don't know how to use this yet. But there you go. Flishy flash. Yeah, that's the low battery lead. It's not low. So yeah, it's looking to get the linky link. And yeah, okay, I'll try and set it up and get it working. Wah, 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 wah. Turns out um, this U1177A um, is obsolete. This product's obsolete and it was only compatible with Android. You used to be able to use the Keysight mobile uh, meter app but I look on the um, Android Play Story thing and I, I can't find it. So I, I don't know what the deal is. So, uh, probably just wasted my time fixing it. Is it like, is it like completely obsolete? It does uh, clip into here. I like how it clips into here. I do actually have the, I do actually have the um, USB serial interface, which is still current for this thing and it works, um, you know, and it, it just plugs into there um, as well. It's very nice. It like snaps in there. Um, but, um, yeah, this thing's obsolete, so, uh, so much for that. Leave it in the comments down below if you use and rely on one of these, because, um, there's two apps available, apparently, uh, the Keysight Mobile Meter, which makes it work like a multimeter, and then Mo uh, Keysight Mobile Logger software. It's supposed to be, um, Android and, I think, iOS. I think some other seller only said it was, um, Android only. But I can't, I don't know, is it on the iOS store? I don't know, but I couldn't find it on the Android, either of those apps. On the Android store, they just had some Keysight Events app or something. I don't know. What the hell's that got to do with anything? But anyway, that, that, that is ridiculous. Imagine, like, you buy into this ecosystem. This is not a cheap meter. This is a top-end, high-priced, top-end Meter, a really good meter, by the way. But imagine if you like relied on this, and then just the app just vanished one day. It's like, uh, yeah, you can probably get and install it manually somewhere. You can download it from some archive or something. But unbelievable. Catch you next time.